Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how to apply texture and leaf metal which you can use in a lot of different paintings. I'm working today on a heavy duty watercolour paper made by Cuthbert Mills, which I've gessoed with a coat of Atelier thick gesso to seal the surface really. Now I'm using a very simple shape um, and it's a bit like a cooking demonstration because these are ones I've done earlier. So I'm using a simple shape, which could be a cloud, it could be a leaf. This sort of shape, which if you're doing more than one, you can use as a template. But if you're very clever, you can just draw them freehand. So this is my simple shape, which I've drawn one there. Now, here you can see it with dried texture paste. This is an Atelier moulding compound, which dries to... Uh, opaque finish and it's quite hard you can feel I'm tapping the leaf so in your leaf shape or your cloud shape whatever it is you're going to use a palette knife and you're going to pick up quite a lot and this is real fun if ever you've iced a cake you'll be, you'll be good at this or, or if you're a fella well, I'm being a bit sort of sexist here, but it's usually the blokes that do the grouting and the DIY, but you're used to using polyfiller and towel, towel grout, um, tile grout, and so you know what this is all about. And you'll probably find that it just flows. Once you start, you can make a lot of interesting shapes. I'm going to leave it there so there's a gap so that you can see what it's like with the texture paste on. Quite simple. Put your knife in water. And I use a tray like that that had vegetables in from the supermarket because it keeps your, your palette knives and your brushes flat so they don't get messed up at the end. Now, you're going to need to leave that to dry and it'll take several hours. So if you've got another painting or you need to do some chores or phone calls, you can get on with that now. Now, the next stage of the game <coughs> is to choose your metal that you're going to use. And I'm going to use an imitation leaf metal. I'm going to show it to you. It's not real gold, but I'm going to use a gold one today. Now, um, it differs from real gold because you can actually pick this up with your fingers. I, I, do, I put a bit of talcum powder on my fingers so it doesn't stick because it does tear easily. And yes, you can see that it's torn easily. <laughs> but anyway, because I'm going to use gold, I'm going to underpaint with a pale gold Atelier paint here. It's got quite a good covering. So I'm going to squeeze some out there on the plate. Put the top on. These tops never get stuck on these paints. I'm using a flat brush, and these are uh, De La Rowney Systems 3 acrylic brushes. And so once this is dry, this is quite dry, this is one I did earlier, I'm going to paint that with my gold. And I'm doing this really so that it, when I apply my leaf metal, if I do make a hole or a tear in it, it won't be so obvious. It's not difficult. You do have to make sure you get in all the little grooves that you've made with your texture paste. So your cat, I, I'll leave that now so I can get on with the next stage. So you put your gold paint on if you're using gold leaf. On this side, because I used a bronze leaf metal, I used a bronze paint underneath, okay? And that's an Atelier one as well. Now you have to wait for that to dry. You've got to be quite dry, and then you're going to apply what's called size. Now, traditionally in gilding, if you were using leaf metal, you would use a size that maybe took 12 hours, 24 hours to cure until it was ready to gild traditionally. But this is like a cheat size and it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to dry and it should feel tacky like um, sellotape. You know, you just touch it, it's got that slight tack to it. 
So I, I, I've, I've, I've actually covered that before about 15 minutes ago. That's actually covered, but it's not difficult. I'm going to put a bit on here so you can see what you do. It looks milky, but it dries clear. And you want very thin coat, very thin coat, all over. Don't have a big blobby bit. This is actually easier to do if your work is flat, because this, if you don't know what you're doing, it's got a tendency to drip down, but so that you can all see. So you recover the whole thing with your size. Put that back in the water. Now that's ready. It feels slightly tacky. I've got a Gilders block here is this. It's got parchment round to stop the draft. I'm going to lay my gold leaf on there. And I'm going to roughly cut a bit. And I'm going to use my fingers to lay a bit onto my side. I'm laying it on gently. And I'm using an old blusher brush. You can use a watercolour mop for this if you want to, but this is my loyal and favourite friend. And you're just, I'm just going to do a section of this. You're gently going to put it in, and then you gently go round and round and round and round, like that, just gently. And you'll find where the size isn't, the gold comes off. Where the size is, it sticks. It takes a little bit of practice. You don't want to be too heavy-handed with this. So it's quite good fun. It looks very neat. So you don't panic. It will work quite well. And then what I do, I get a piece of cotton wool as well, and I'll just flatten it down again. If you're incorporating these shapes in a painting, well, then you can paint over any... Uh, ragged edges or where you don't want the gold leaf. So there you can see that's half of it with gold and half with the gilding in. Now, because this is imitation metal, it will tarnish once it's in contact with the air. So you need to seal it. Um, I use a, a traditional method. I use something called shellac. And what you do to make it, you dissolve your flakes in methylated spirits. And then what you do, you'll put some in a little pot like that <coughs> and you get another soft brush. And I've actually done it here because I've only done half. I'm not going to put it on. It's simple. It's just like a liquid. And you, you'll just paint over your gilded surface with this. And uh, it takes about 10 minutes to dry and you get a really hard surface. And you'll get a bit of relief where, where the the shape of the um, modelling compound goes in, so it gives it more interest. So you can let it dry after that. If you don't want to use shellac, you can use uh, an acrylic medium, gloss medium, or matte medium, or sat satin medium. This is an Atelier one. Or you could use a solvent-based uh, oil varnish, or that's to seal it. And so that will preserve it and make it what they call archival, which means it's supposed to last a long time. So this is really the demonstration finished. And um, I hope that you enjoyed that and you find that exciting and that you find some application where you can use that. Thank you. Well, here you can see the effect of using texture and Dutch metal in a finished painting. Mm -hmm.